the basic idea of the film is that there was a company in Utah that started editing Hollywood films, basically sanitizing Hollywood films of sex, violence, profanity, trying to clean it up for families, mainly Mormon audiences. Mm -hmm. And when they did that, they became very successful throughout the United States, and they were growing and growing until the Directors Guild of America kind of caught wind of what they were doing and shut them down. And that's the basic setup for the story. And then we kind of came in and wanted to tell the next part of that story as well. Mm -hmm. Which do you want to talk about? Yeah, so after the DGA shut down Clean Flix and all the copycat companies that were doing the same thing, um, there were dozens of stores that stayed open illegally um, in Utah and Idaho and Texas, you know, other places that continued to sanitize films kind of under the radar. And so the film sort of tracks that as well. And that's how Daniel gets brought into the film because he's one of the guys doing this after the lawsuit. What year did you start on this project? 2006 and we so we started shooting in 2006, finished shooting in 2008, and then we're in post-production throughout 2009 and we had a premiere at the Toronto Film Festival um, in September 2009. So almost three years we yeah. worked on the film. How did it work with both of you being uh, on the same level as direct directing the uh, film? We just at first, we kind of just took turns. We'd like, okay, you edit for this many hours, I'll edit for this many hours. We're just kind of slowly going through the footage. We get together every once in a while and look at what we've been working on and talk through it, and mm -hmm. it just and just kept narrowing it down. And I mean, of course, there's always challenges when you've got you know a partnership of any kind, you know. Um, but I think it worked out really well, actually. Where did you meet at film school, or what's what's your uh, past? together. We, we met through one of the producers of the film. We didn't actually know each other before we started making the movie together. Um, one of the producers kind of had the idea and he said, you two should work together. And cool. he set up a lunch and we met and started filming really quickly thereafter. And yeah, That was one of my questions I was going to ask is, w at what point did you have the thought to, to do this film? But it was actually the producer that had the idea for this film and then he procured you to go ahead and direct the show. Is that is that correct? Kind of. Kind of. Yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a topic that I've been interested in a long time and I just wasn't sure if we could it could sustain a feature film. And, and so, who, who is your producer? Um, well, the producer that we're speaking of, his name is Xavier Gutierrez. What was it like having access to Daniel? I mean, was there a, a fair, fairly good rapport? Yeah, I mean, Daniel would call us sometimes. He'd say, hey guys, this is gum this is happening. Come on down, bring your cameras. You know, and Daniel set up the interview about the about the sex test. I mean, mm -hmm. that was his idea. He he's like, I got something I I gotta tell you. Come come to my house and bring your camera. So we it was, a, it was an yeah. interesting experience. And it was something <laughs> yeah. that we were always kind of worried it was that it was tenuous and so we were always trying to nurture that relationship and mm -hmm. and and you know, let him know that we were gonna be honest, you right. know, and, and hope that that would be enough. Did you get an opportunity to talk to anyone from Hollywood? Originally, it was our intent to cover a little bit more of that history, but um, it, it became clear that our focus needed to stay. It, there was, it was such a big story, and especially mm -hmm. once the Daniel sex scandal happened, it was so difficult to even fit the amount of information that we have now into an hour and a half. I mean, I think that's one of the interesting things about the film. You've got this whole community that's sort of censoring themselves, watching these films that have been stripped of their meaning, you know, because they're getting the clean versions, and then Daniel is living this double life and sort of personifying mm -hmm. this whole clean mm -hmm. film movement. And so that's why Daniel is so instrumental in the story of edited films. And it's so like Josh said at our last Q&A, like switching from the sort of debate of edited movies and from the lawsuit into the story of Daniel was very organic for us because that's naturally where the story of edited films went. Mm -hmm. You know, it starts with editing Titanic and it goes to the lawsuit and then it goes to these guys who stay open illegally and Daniel's at the forefront of that. And so you really can't tell the story of edited films without talking about Daniel. And so for us, it was less about the history of movies or the history of, of censorship and more about telling the story, the mm -hmm. story of edited films. Mm -hmm. And so it's, you know, Titanic, it's Clean Flicks, it's all these companies, this growth, this lawsuit, and then these companies that stay open illegally and Daniel sort of... And anyone with Daniel who kind of personifies right. the entire culture of censorship. Do you have any other uh, projects in yeah. line for yourself both, right yeah, now? Yeah, we both have new projects. Are you working on them uh, presently or just yeah. gearing up for them? My, mine's about halfway finished. My next film is, um, takes place in New Mexico and it's about this group of basically grave robbers who are robbing Native American grave sites and selling the artifacts on the black market to really well-known museums and These are Indi houses. Indian burial grounds? Yeah, exactly. Oh, wow. And um, our film kind of tries to uncover the, 
the way that the black market works for them. I just watched uh, uh, Real Engine. Have you yeah, seen that exactly, that yeah. uh, documentary? Yeah. yeah. How about yourself? Are you working? Um, yeah, my next uh, project is um, sort of in pre-production slash production right now. That's called Street Fighting Man, and it's about um, grassroots activism on the east side of Detroit. It takes a community bent and sort of follows different members, different residents of that community as they do different things to sort of bolster their neighborhoods. Um, because there's no public funding, schools have closed down, police stations have closed down. So, so they're policing themselves? They're policing themselves, they're growing their own food, and they're doing anything they can to sort of bolster their community. And so the film is going to take a look at like these people's lives and just show like what it takes to survive there. Um, it's sort of like a new thing to the American experience um, where communities are basically fighting for their own survival because there's no uh, public funding. Those are great, great subject matter. You know, I think I think I think I think that's the uh, the one ingredient that really makes a great uh, documentarian is coming up with the premise right. yeah. of what to film. That's that's definitely the most important <laughs> aspect. And yeah, then, we got lucky with Clean Flicks. Yeah, yeah, we did. We're, I think what we're trying to do with our new films, both of us, is take then then take it from the story point and take it to the next level and really try to make cinematic works that can hold up to you know any fictional feature film and really tell it. Cinematic. Well, we'll story. probably be seeing you next year with your. Uh, sure, hope so. <laughs> or the year after, depending on when we finish. Right, yeah. <laughs> Andrew, thank you very much. Thanks for Joshua, having us. It's yeah. a pleasure.